Andrea and Curtis had been married for eight years. They'd always been that couple that was deeply in love with each other, and they felt that they built a very strong foundation for their marriage. However, over time, like with all marriages, the passion and excitement died away. Now, they have one child with autism, and the bills were becoming an issue. Of course, this put a lot of strain on their marriage, and they had less and less time for one another, let alone, you know, the energy to maintain the relationship. Before, in the early days, when Curtis came home after work, he would go straight to Andrea, hug her, kiss her, and ask her about her day. But now, Curtis goes straight to the couch to watch the hockey game. And since they would go to bed at two different times, they'd barely even interact with each other. Andrea began feeling withdrawn and dispassionate. You know, initially she just thought it was a phase and that things would turn around. But then she began losing hope and she was worried that their family was going to fall apart. Now from Curtis's perspective, he was sick and tired of all the arguments about the bills and he was incredibly stressed out at work. He started putting in more and more hours and started picking up extra shifts on the weekend. He was overworked, miserable and fatigued and because of it, he was taking out all of his frustration on his marriage and on Andrea. At the same time, Curtis felt like Andrea was drifting away from him too and thinking about losing her in their marriage made his stomach turn. But he didn't know where to begin when it came to healing their relationship and he felt like he just didn't have the energy to think about it either. Anyone who's been married knows that marriage is never a smooth road. You know, there are inevitably going to be cracks in the armor that are going to test your relationship's resolve. You know, have you ever had a moment where you've sat down and thought to yourself, does my partner still love me? Now, like Curtis and Andrea, maybe your partner has been showing some signs that their commitment to the marriage simply isn't there and that they might be thinking about leaving you altogether. Hey YouTube, Brad Browning here, and I of course am a relationship coach from Western Canada, and today I'm going to share with you some subtle signs that your marriage is falling apart. Now the thing is, when problems start to creep into a marriage, they're not always obvious. Now though most people think of, you know, screaming matches or divorce threats, there are actually many more subtle signs that you need to be aware of. Now before I go ahead and share with you the top 8 things to look for, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a helpful online quiz that will let you know your odds for saving your marriage and will also give you some advice on what you should do next to make that happen. To take the quiz, just go to marriageguy.com quiz. Now let's get started. Number 1. Your focus has switched from us to I. So when you and your spouse first got together, you were probably in the, the us mindset, right? You know, you made plans together, you worked around one another's schedules, you'd constantly make plans with your spouse. Even doing mundane tasks like going to the hardware store, or picking up groceries, were done with your spouse. But over time, you know, maybe that fades and you're left with a completely different mindset. And while it's, it's totally normal for the, for the honeymoon stage to end and for spouses to slip into their own routines, if your collective mindset has switched from us to I, then it's a sure sign that your marriage has some underlying issues. So, you know, is your, is your spouse or partner making more plans without you? Are they spending more time with their friends than with you? Are they trying to, to find excuses to leave you behind at the house while they enjoy their alone time? If your partner is just trying to find ways from getting, to get away from you, uh, this could be a sign that the foundation of your marriage might be a little shaky. Sign number two, your spouse is not your go-to person. So there was likely a time when your spouse was the person that you went to for everything. Whether it was someone to vent to or someone to share your daily stories with, he or she was that person for you. If either of you have started turning to others, then it could be because your communication is lacking. Remember, it takes openness and honesty for your marriage to be healthy and to go the distance. And if this isn't happening, then it could definitely be a sign that your love life is in trouble. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be everything for your spouse. You know, you will have to adjust your expectations when it comes to, to what you and your spouse expect from each other in marriage. It is totally okay to have a golfing partner, you know, because your spouse hates golfing. It's totally okay to, to gossip about reality TV with your best friend because it isn't your partner's cup of tea. But there is one thing for certain. You know, you want to be your spouse's primary sounding board for most things that are happening in their life. So if they're talking to, to friends about their issues instead of to you, then it's time to re-examine how you two communicate and see if there's anything that you can do to fix this pressing issue. Sign number three, you're comparing your spouse to others. So if you find yourself comparing your spouse to others or wishing they were more like somebody else, then it's a sure sign that you're not totally happy in your marriage. Even if it's hypothetical, once these kind of thoughts start creeping in, it's time to take a step back and look for whatever issues are causing you to feel this way. I mean, listen, nobody's perfect, and of course there are going to be people out there that are better than your spouse in some areas. But remember that it's easy to overlook all of your spouse's amazing qualities when something new and shiny is right in front of you. The truth is, other people are probably going to be looking at your spouse in that way too. 
So if you find yourself comparing your spouse to others, just realize that the person you're comparing your spouse to is most definitely not perfect. You know, they probably have a host of, of other underlying issues that you're simply not aware of. So oftentimes making these comparisons is a pointless and misleading exercise. Don't take your spouse for granted. Number four, you're living separate lives. You know, he goes out to, to with his buddies every night after work. She spends her weekends hanging out with her lady friends. If you and your spouse are living two completely separate lives, then it's a sure sign that your marriage isn't in a healthy place. Now, while it's important that you and your spouse have your own things on the go, it's also important that your individual lives don't overtake your life as a married couple. Just like in the first tip I mentioned, um, if the focus of your spouse's life is their own life, then it's time to reevaluate how you guys are treating the marriage. Because being in a marriage means being a team. You know, it's about fighting for each other, supporting each other, and loving each other. But if this stops being the case, then this is definitely a sign that you and your spouse are falling apart from one another. Now, if this is you, you're going to want to broach this topic carefully because it is important for your spouse to pursue goals and passions outside of the marriage. However, this can obviously go too far, uh, and you can you have to you and your spouse have to be aware of this. Sign number five: You're wondering what if. So, contemplating what your life would be if you made different decisions is totally normal. However, you know, if you're constantly asking yourself what life without your spouse would be like, then it's just definitely a sign that something's up. Happily married couples can't imagine life without their partner, which is why this is a warning sign that something isn't right. Now, to find out how deep your marital issues run, go to marriageguy.com quiz and take the free online test. Based on your results, you'll also receive feedback for what you should be doing to turn your marriage around. Again, you can take that quiz for yourself at marriageguy.com quiz. Sign number six is that you're keeping score. So have you and your spouse been you know, keeping tabs on who does what? Say for instance, you know, one of you is making more of an effort to spend time together or is trying harder to make the other happy. Or on the other hand, you know, maybe one of you has been noting all the things that the other is doing wrong. Well, when marriages become a tally of, of who the better spouse is, then it may be a way for that spouse to convince themselves that you shouldn't be together. After all, you know, marriage is about teamwork, not rivalry. And sign number seven, your roommates, not lovers. So while it's important to be friends with your spouse, if your relationship feels more like a friendship than a marriage, it could be a sign that something is missing. You know, yes, it's great to be able to order a pizza and watch Netflix together, but unless there's some sort of deeper bond, then it may you know, be time to take a step back and evaluate your relationship. Now, a good sign to look for here is if you and your spouse have to put on an, an act to, and to sort of pretend to be happy and a happy, loving family around others, if you're faking it, that's a huge red flag that your marriage is in trouble. And of course, you know, a not so subtle sign that your marriage is falling apart is if the intimacy has completely fallen off. Like I've said in many of my other videos, the natural waning of your sex life is 100% to be expected, um, but it doesn't mean that your marriage is falling apart or, or that anything is wrong. The amount of, of sex that you have is, is totally up to both of you. However, if there is a big disparity between how much sex you want versus your partner's wants, then that can be a pretty huge sign that one of you thinks, the mar thinks of the marriage more as a, as a friendship than a marriage. And sign number eight, you're not fighting or loving. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, oftentimes couples don't realize that their marriage has issues if they haven't been arguing or fighting. But the truth is though that, that even if you and your spouse are getting along swimmingly, if you're not loving each other, then your marriage may be falling apart. And what's worse is if you're not fighting because you're bottling up your emotions. When this happens, resentment starts to build and before you know it, you're a firecracker just waiting to be lit. And that's why it's so important to take the time to check in with your emotions and remember, you know, just because all appears well on the outside doesn't mean it really is. It's also equally important to check in with your spouse from time to time to kind of air out your grievances. These conversations can be brutal moments, you know, especially if your spouse has something deeply hurtful to say or if they feel like something is fundamentally wrong with your relationship. But the more you check in with your spouse, the earlier you can air those grievances so they don't grow into something more serious. Now, in the case of Andrea and Curtis that we talked about earlier in the video, this was one of the tactics that I taught them that helped put their marriage back on track. I told them that they needed to have, you know, a marital scrum, so to speak. Every week, they would just take an hour to talk about their marriage. Now, I wouldn't limit them to talking about what went wrong that week, but I would also let them talk about, you know, what they loved about that week as well. And forcing this moment of communication allowed them to clearly outline what was going wrong in the marriage and how each of them could help to improve the relationship and make it grow and improve over time. And I am happy to report that after just two months of this kind of hardline communication, Andrea and Curtis are, are happily still working through their issues. Of course, they, they do have a lot to work on, but things are much better than they were before listening to some of my advice. 
And by the way, if you're at all interested in signing up for my online marriage coaching program, just visit marriageguy.com slash coaching. You can see all the details and sign up there today. Well, that just about does it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions about what I've covered, feel free to post them in the uh, comment section below. I always love hearing from you guys. And also, if you like what you've learned here and you want to show your support for my channel, just subscribe and check out some more of my videos on here as well. So until next time, take care and all the best.